assalamu alaikum dear students uh, we are going to study a classification of receptors the most important criteria used to classify sensory receptors is on the basis of uh, nature of sensory stimulus or the modality of sensation on this basis receptors can be classified into five categories number one is mechanoreceptors mechanoreceptors are those receptors which are stimulated by some mechanical stimulus which means that mechanical stimulus when put some pressure uh, on the sensory receptor or causes compression compression of the receptor or stretching uh, in the tissues uh, then these mechanoreceptors they are stimulated mechanoreceptor is the largest category of all the receptors they are uh, uh, present in our skin we call them cutaneous mechanoreceptors i'll give you some examples of cutaneous mechanoreceptors cutaneous mechanoreceptors which are present in our skin uh, they are present in epidermis and uh, dermis their examples are free nerve endings free nerve endings these uh, are receptors for uh, several sensations which are carried by Pinothalamic pathway like for pain, temperature, itch, uh, sexual sensations, and crude touch, crude pressure. Another kind of uh, skin receptor is uh, Merkel's disc and then Meissner's carpuscles. Meissner's carpuscles, uh, these are encapsulated receptors and they carry. Uh, sense of vibration. The vibrations which are carried by Meissner's carpuscle they range uh, in frequency from 5 to 40 hertz. The two kind of vibrations which are detected uh, by vibration receptors from our skin, low frequency vibrations detected by Meissner carpuscles. Another kind of um, receptor which is the Pacinian carpuscle that, that detects high frequency vibrations. Now let's talk about uh, receptors which are present uh, uh, in deeper tissues. So we can call them deep tissue mechanoreceptors. The examples of these uh, receptors located in deeper tissues are free nerve endings. They are, these are present in the ligaments and also in, in, in the fascias. A very important encapsulated receptor which is Pacinian carpuscle is also located in the subdermis. Uh, this Pacinian carpuscle is important for uh, detecting deep pressure and also high frequency vibration which ranges from 60 to 300 hertz so high frequency vibrations are detected by piscinian carpuscles in our uh, deeper tissues two other kinds of receptors are also present in the deeper tissues one is the muscle spindle as you already know that muscle spindle is the um, receptor for detecting muscle length is present in the uh, muscles these are modified kind of muscle fibers and they detect lengthening of a muscle or change in the length of muscle then is uh, golgi tendon organ they are present in the uh, tendons of muscles and they detect uh, change in tension of a muscle so change in tension of a muscle is detected by the golgi tendon organ and change in length of a muscle is detected by the muscle spindles so all of these the receptors they are present in our skin and deeper tissues and they are called as mechanoreceptors some other mechanoreceptors which are not present in our somatic uh, on the body surface uh, and the muscles are tendons rather they are present in some specialized organs for example in our internal ear there are two kind of mechanoreceptors the mechanoreceptor for hearing they are hair cells which are located in the cochlea and then is uh, receptors for equilibrium the receptors for equilibrium are also present in our internal ear in the vestibular apparatus uh, in the utricle and saccule macula contains the hair cells there are also hair cells present which detect uh, the change in position of our body so these are hair cells present in our cochlea and hair cells present in our vestibular apparatus both of them they are stimulated when fluid moves and uh, we call them mechanoreceptors then receptors for which detect change in blood pressure 
they are also mechanoreceptors and they are present in the arch of aorta and uh, in the carotid sinus we call them baroreceptors you see blood pressure uh, this is a mechanical stimulus and this stimulus when it increases or decreases that uh, uh, mechanically puts more or less pressure on the blood vessels larger blood vessels and then appropriate response is produced by the middle lung so this is the largest category of sensory receptors we call them mechanoreceptors because they are stimulated by the mechanical stimulus either by compression of the receptor or stretching of the receptor or stretching of the tissue which is located close to the sensory receptor so they may be present in our skin in the epidermis and dermis or they may be present in the deeper tissues in the subdermis or in the fascias or in the muscles and tendons and the receptors in uh, cochlea and the vestibular operators of the internal ear and the receptors in larger blood vessels in aorta and the carotid sinus all of them they are mechanoreceptors right so after mechanoreceptors the second category of receptors uh, thermoreceptors thermoreceptors detect change in temperature and there are two types of thermoreceptors one for cold and the other one is for warmth so both for cold and for uh, uh, warmth we have different kind of thermoreceptors then are receptors for detecting pain which we call as noci receptors so noci receptors are noci receptors they are receptors for pain uh, pain is uh, a sensation which is uh, detected by these receptors when there is uh, damage in the tissue and that may be because of uh, uh, physical uh, stimulus chemical stimulus or thermal stimulus so we we, we have uh, mechanical noci receptors thermal noci receptors chemical sense chemically sensitive noci receptors and we also have some pain receptors which are called as polymodal noci receptors which are stimulated by different types of noxious or damaging stimuli then we have uh, electromagnetic receptors electromagnetic receptors they are rods and cones which are present in the retina of our eyes and they are sensitive to electromagnetic stimulus or light then is another large category of receptors called as chemo receptors the different types of chemo receptors present in our body for example the taste receptors which are present uh, in our taste buds of the tongue and they detect various kind of taste chemicals uh, like uh, sugar salt sour taste uh, bitter taste uh, we have uh, receptors for smell which are present in the olfactory epithelium of our nose and they detect various odorant chemicals then we have uh, chemical receptors which detect uh, changes in arterial oxygen and these uh, receptors are present in the carotid bodies and aortic bodies we have receptors which detect uh, changes in the arterial carbon dioxide and these receptors are present on the surface of ventral medulla and also present uh, in the carotid and aortic bodies then we have receptors which detect uh, changes in the osmolarity located uh, in the supraoptic nucleus of our hypothalamus we also have receptors which detect uh, changes in our blood glucose level amino acids level and fatty acids level they are present in the hypothalamus so we have classified sensory receptors on the basis of nature of stimulus in five categories one is uh, mechanoreceptors which is the largest category of receptors second largest part, uh, category of receptors is chemoreceptors and then we have electromagnetic receptors noci receptors or noci receptors and thermoreceptors this is one way to classify receptors there are some other ways as well by which we can classify receptors another way to classify receptors is on the basis of their encapsulation those receptors which are encapsulated they are called as encapsulated receptors and they are having a capsule which is made by connective tissue examples of these receptors which are encapsulated are the senian corpuscle which is important for detecting fast vibration and uh, deep pressure mesner's corpuscles mesner corpuscle detect slow frequency vibrations 
and another type of encapsulated receptor is muscle spindle then the receptors which are not covered by a connective tissue capsule they are called as non encapsulated receptors the examples of non encapsulated receptors are free nerve endings which are present abundantly in our skin in the subcutaneous tissue in the fascias and Merkel's discs we will study all these receptors in detail later on another criteria on which we can classify receptors is on the basis of location of the receptor if the receptors they detect a stimulus uh, which is arising from outside of the body then these receptors are called as exterior receptors and the example of exterior receptors are tactile receptors which detect touch vibration pressure and are present in our skin then the receptors for smell which are located in our nose the receptors for taste present in our uh, tongue and the receptor for uh, vision present in our uh, in our retina the rods and cones they are all exterior receptors and those receptors which detect the stimulus which are arising from inside of the body they are called as interior receptors the examples of interior receptors are baroreceptors which detect changes in blood pressure then chemoreceptors which detect changes in the arterial oxygen carbon dioxide and the ph level other examples of interior receptors are proprioceptor which detect changes in position and movement and visceral receptors the receptors which are present in our visceras and they detect various uh, stimuli another way to classify receptors is on the basis of their adaptation so some receptors they adapt rapidly so we call them rapidly adapting receptors the word adaptation means when a sustained stimulus is given to a receptor initially the receptor has uh, higher receptor potential and then increased frequency of uh, action potentials traveling along the nerve fiber but with continuous stimulation the receptor potential decreases and the number of uh, action potentials can also decrease for those receptors which uh, rapidly decrease the receptor potential with sustained stimulation and then decrease rapidly decrease the number of action potentials traveling along the nerve fiber they are called as rapidly adapting receptors the rapidly adapting receptors they inform our brain about uh, the change in rate and change in frequency so that's why those receptors which detect uh, uh, frequency they come under rapidly adapting receptors for example pacinian carpuscle the meesner's carpuscles and also the hair follicle receptors uh, hair follicle receptors they inform our brain about uh, movement across our skin for example some insect crawling on the skin so they detect movement across the skin the hair follicle receptors so pacinian carpuscle meesner's carpuscle hair follicle receptors are all rapidly adapting receptors which means when we give them a stimulus initially there is a receptor potential and increased number of action potential along the nerve fiber but as the stimulus is sustained then the receptor pressure rapidly decreases and the number of action potentials firing along the nerve fiber also decreases the other type of receptors in this criteria are the slowly adapting receptors these are more common receptors as compared to rapidly adapting receptors and slowly adaptive receptors uh, when they are given a stimulus initially there is a receptor potential there is a number of uh, action potentials which are firing along the nerve fiber and with the passage of time the receptor potential slightly decreases and the number of action potential also decrease so they, they their response will remain sustained to a sustained stimulus and uh, they may keep on firing for maybe hours or maybe days the examples of slowly adapting receptors are Merkel's discs. Merkel's discs are slowly adapting receptors. And then we have Orphanes endings. Both of these receptors, they are present in our skin. Then we have uh, muscle spindles, which are present in our uh, muscles. And they are very important proprioceptor. You see, uh, muscle spindles, they continuously inform our brain about the length of a muscle and they regulate our muscle tone so they are continuously working Mus muscle spindle they are slowly adapting receptors and then golgi tendon 
organs they are also slowly adapting receptors both of them they are proprio uh, receptors then we have uh, joint capsule receptors uh, another uh, important receptor is present in our internal ear and these are macula which are present in the utricle and saccule of the vestibular apparatus these receptors they are important for the maintenance of balance and equilibrium and uh, they are uh, slowly adapting they are always working when we are sitting or when we are walking they inform our brain about maintenance of the balance and equilibrium then the receptors for pain the nausea receptors they are also slowly adapting receptors when someone is having pain the receptors should not adapt otherwise the damaging stimulus uh, will keep on damaging the tissue and we will not be aware of it and the damage may be much more uh, till we notice it so these pain receptors are very important because they are slowly adapting and they continuously keep on informing our brain as long as the damaging stimulus is there so that we seek some clinical advice and then the receptors for regulating our blood pressure the baroreceptors present in our arch of aorta and the carotid sinus they are also slowly adapting receptors when the blood pressure is fluctuating up to a certain degrees they will bring it back to the normal so they do not adapt they adapt to new pressure maybe after two days otherwise they do not adapt rapidly and then the chemo receptors the receptors uh, which are uh, for detecting changes in oxygen carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions they are uh, also slowly adapting receptors so just to summarize we have uh, classified receptors uh, on the basis of four criteria number one on the basis of uh, uh, nature of the stimulus uh, we have classified receptors into mechanoreceptors chemoreceptors uh, electromagnetic receptors nosy receptors and thermoreceptors then we have also classified receptors on the basis of their encapsulation whether they are encapsulated or non encapsulated receptors another way to classify receptors is uh, on the basis of the location of the stimulus whether it's arising from outside of the body so exterior receptors or it is arising from inside of the body the interior receptors and we can also classify receptors on the basis of uh, their ad rate of adaptation the slowly adapting and rapidly adapting receptors so from these receptors you may be asked any question in your examination so you should know the examples of uh, receptors which come under these classification according to various criteria so up till now we have studied the classification of receptors in our next lecture we are going to study the cutaneous mechanoreceptors in a little bit more detail and i will give you some very interesting mnemonics to memorize the features of those cutaneous mechanoreceptors so thank you so much for watching this video see you next time with another lecture